I'm Faith Popcorn, and you're not. <laughs> no, Chevy Chase, I stole that from him. Anyway, um, I was thinking what I should do today, um, beside tell you what's going to happen, and I thought it would be really great if I could show you how to do it. You know, it's that fishing pole fish thing. And I think that that is what I'm supposed to be doing here um, on this planet or the next planet, last planet. So that's what I'm going to do. And um, if you have questions after this, write to me um, at fpopcorn at faithpopcorn.com. Anything. I'd love to hear from you. So that's part of how I figure out the future. I ask you what you think. <laughs> so anyway, I'm clicking. Oh, there it is. Yep. Brain user. Mm hmm so um, you're noticing, of course, that consumers have a lot of access to information, right? They're becoming savvier. When does the future start? Now. When is the future? The future starting? When is the future starting? The future starts and, 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 right. So when people think it's going to be a long way away, remember that it starts right now. So I'm going to lay it out for you, and I'm hoping that when I lay it out for you, not only will you be able to predict it, but when you go outside, you're going to be able to see it, because you'll see things differently. So this consumer, customer, person, you, they're getting, you notice yourself getting a lot more demanding, like when you don't get what you want at a, at a counter, a grocery store, on the internet, you get really Angry. Anybody get angry lately? It's just me. <laughs> they know what they want. They know how to get it. And in today's marketplaces, they are first to the future. They're before the maker. They're telling the maker how to make things. They're absolutely first there. And really, to understand the, con the culture, and to understand the consumer, you really have to get there a little bit a moment before they do. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So we've been predicting the future since 1974. Um, it's probably going to be on my gravestone, but um, in 1981, I said people are going to start to be cocooning. She said people would be here. Here she cocoons, it will say on my gravestone. So, you know, and, and, and people thought, oh, yeah, I called that right, you know, said that the new Coke wouldn't be good, said four-wheel drives, you know, are going to get hot, said, let's see, what else did I say? We said, um, we said uh, bottled water, you know, the planet was like getting thirsty, you know, people were getting thirsty, they would want bottled water. Now we're saying bottled water, really, it should go away. We said that, that the cigarette police were just a minute before the fat police and the sugar police. How did we know all that? I mean, this can't be all accidents. So one of the things is about really trusting what you're feeling, what you're seeing, what you're tasting, what you're listening to. We, we say this to chairmen, and they go, feeling? <laughs> that just makes we Intuition? Listening? You know? So we're saying, in this place, intuition meets observation. And figuring out the future is really kind of listening to your, I don't know, third eye, second heart, your eyes, what you're feeling, what your instincts are telling you, and reading. We're reading about, I don't know, 4,000 publications a month, 20 languages. And it's interesting because that's how we start to figure out the themes. So you know how you say to yourself, gee, you know, I kind of knew that, or I kind of thought that, or I just read something like that. That's theming, that's pattern making. So you're, you're looking really for patterns. And we also have a talent bank, and I, I, I welcome any of you into it. Just write to us and tell us what you're passionately interested in. And you're going to hear from Malika Chopra tomorrow. Deepak's in our talent bank. She's in our talent bank. And to be in our talent bank, you have to be absolutely, insanely, and wildly passionate about something. That's all it takes. Because when we're working on something or thinking about something, we ask you, you know, what do you think about this? What are you, what are you thinking? What are you, what, in, your, in your venue, like the, the astronomers, what they're noticing about you know, the planets, looking up, looking out, that's what we're interested in. So we have trend spotters really all over the world, and they're writing to us, and they're telling us little things, like there's a store in a, in a I'm sure you're fascinated with this, there is, I was. 
There's a store in a Japanese uh, subway station, and they sell all kinds of different stuff, T-shirts and candy. And When they run out of something, do you know what? They don't order it again. So people get kind of crazy. They get desperate. They go to the store, and they're like, grab, give me two, give me three. And that's called the short line. And actually, big manufacturers haven't figured this out yet. They don't know how to do that. People want what, what's going to run out. And unfortunately, and you're seeing, that, you know, you're seeing that on the planet right now, what's going to run out. They want what's going to run out. So that's what we learned in a subway station in Tokyo. So this is our trend bank. It's on our website. It really says, you know, these trends really predict what's going to happen. So all you do is, like, look at these trends. We, you know what our mission is? Lifting ourselves and others into their best future. So we publish this. We show it to you. We give it to you. And what you need to do, your, your work is to say, what does this mean to me, my life, my business? How is cocooning affecting me, my life, my... What about icon toppling? The fact that big, big structures, big companies, um, big things we don't believe in anymore are falling. Vigilante consumer, that anger. Evolution, that men and women, duh, are different. <laughs> and women's brains are completely different. Completely. I mean, thank goodness Harvard did a study on that. Now people believe it. So... <laughs> We're looking at 95% accuracy in this, in this um, trend bank, and you don't have to believe me. I mean, they've been, they've been tracking us for uh, four decades now to say, you know, oh, she called that. Was that, she called that, was that right? So what I'm saying is that once you understand where it's going, it's really pretty easy to figure out, like, what's coming. And the way to figure out the future is not to say, oh, you know, look at the past, past repeats itself. It does not repeat itself. It's like pulling out your old tie. You put it on, but it doesn't look quite right, does it? Wide ties are bad, but not exactly the same way as your old tie. So you have to go buy a new wide tie. That's like about the future. You can't like look to the past. You have to look out to the future and look back and figure out when this stuff is going to happen. And you can figure out the far future. Or if you can't, read the real future is Margaret Atwood. She figured it out. When I read those books, I get chilled. I go, absolutely right, absolutely right. The brain chips are coming. Now, you know, we've been talking about brain chips for a very long time. Why learn a language when you could put the chip in and know it, right? End of worrying, math fear, gone, chip, know it. (laughs) So those chips will be here. They're working on them right now. And you will really be able to absorb knowledge without having to learn it. And yes, the fat pill is coming. They're working on it. So we talk a lot about the future. And I want to just share with you, and I know you've been seeing it, the future of media. What's the future of media? There's a real turning, transitioning right now. Don't you feel the planet is kind of like, isn't everything like transitioning? Not only happening fast, fast like warp speed, but kind of transitioning. You kind of feel that things are changing. So we become real social media junkies. It's like we're hooked. And we're able to, like, you're looking at your Blackberry, you're Twittering, you're tweeting, you're beeping, you're... It's just like this. And some people that say, you know, I'm not going to do that, they're going to be the ones that didn't do it, and they're gone, they're in the dust, and the ones that, you know, are, you know trying, it's getting harder and harder and harder to ride that horse. And our whole bios and who we are are created on our Facebook. And even now, people, you know, when they interview you, they look on your Facebook, by the way. It's a new HR thing, you know? YouTube, boom. Four million people watching, I don't know, a baby sing karaoke. I mean, that's fascinating, right? So, in the past, you were what you owned. Now you are what you share. Now you are what you share. So your reputation, your personal reputation, is being created on your website, on your Twitter, through your Facebook. So this is fast, th- uh, uh, past think, present think, you know, placing your products, you know, in a, in a movie, you know, trying to like, you know, kind of place your products there. Future think is moving from impressions. You know how they measure commercials, how many impressions to connections, how many connections, how many, you know, they call them, um, they call them like uh, Twitter slots, how many people are following you. Can you imagine if those people are really following you, how nervous you'd be? <laughs> I mean, those people are following you. 
Twitter sluts just say, sure, come on, I'm one of them. You know, sure, come because I like, you know, they ask me stuff, but then I can ask them stuff. That's good. So the consumer is truly in control. You're in control. You get to write Levi's and go, I don't like the jeans. I want it this way. And guess what? Everybody is having in the, in the, in the product world to start to listen. They're starting to listen because they realize that you can walk away. They're starting to give people product service the way they want it because they realize that you can walk away. The culture, that's you, is starting to be in control. So your brand isn't what you say it is. Your brand is what Google says it is. Google's the new Harvard, whatever Google says. You know, they used to say whatever Jesus said. It's now whatever Google said. So you want to know who's, what somebody's thinking or whether you should like them? What do you do? First thing, you Google them. You go to a party, you get the guest list, you Google it. So what's the new media? See, I'm not the only one that does that. <laughs> culture is the new media. So if you want to get something out there, you have to weave it into the culture. And culture is now not about museum going or, or, or theater or concerts. It's what we feel, what we live, what we love, what we breathe. That's the living vibrations of a culture. So the new future of marketing is really going in culture, weaving a brand or a product deep into the culture. You need to meet it in the, meet it in the culture because you will not be watching. It's already happened. You know, that's the past. You will not be buying stuff from television commercials. You're buying stuff from how you're seeing it in the culture. So good, save your money. So I need this next slide, because I want to tell them this next thing. So you have to weave the DNA of a brand into the DNA of the culture, like deep into the culture. Have your consumer meet it in the culture. Everything's happening in the cultural landscape. And the cultural landscape, and this is what makes people crazy, is evolving. It's constantly changing. So I'm going to give you a couple of trends that I believe really define the culture and see if you're seeing it. I mentioned this one, icon toppling. We don't believe in anything big anymore. We don't believe in the FBI. We don't believe in, in, in the government. We don't believe in the president. We don't believe in the church. We don't believe in anything. Tiger is a cheetah. Because that was a headline in the Post, my favorite publication. So beyond petroleum, I want to tell you a little thing about petroleum. The Hopi Indians said they had 10 tenants. I believe the seventh tenant was the waters will turn black. So this is very, very interesting, because this is a crime really against nature. Okay, how do many people feel that this, this is a crime, this spill? But you know how many spills there have been? Like lots and lots of spills. So I'm wondering, and I think you know, with this, this anger, the icon toppling, whether if, 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 if a chairman or a head of a company knew that they would get the death penalty or go to jail for life for a crime against nature, Maybe they would have done a little bit more testing. Maybe that would have happened. <laughs> Death penalty, and I'm not kidding. Don't tell my clients I said that. <laughs>